Hi, thank you for being here. I'm a wife, daughter, athlete, grandma, and I'm convinced that my faith and the athlete part of me have saved my life more than once. I've always been an active child. I played baseball, soccer, ran cross country, and in high school I joined the track team. I had to quit the track team because the boys would tease me about how well endowed I was. And there was no Title IX back then. <clears throat> After school, I joined the Navy, where I met and married a Marine who took my breath away and everything else. He took my identity. When I finally got tired of being abused, I called my family. And they had a ticket for me <laughs> at the Houston airport. To <clears throat> so. <clears throat> Thank you. Once back home in Burlington, I went to business college, tried to find me again, and started back to exercising when I was in a terrible car, car accident on the freeway. My son flew out of the car and was picked up by strangers, taken to a Mount Vernon hospital as an abandoned child. They found me pinned underneath my car and took me to um, Cedar Woolley Hospital. At this time, I'm thinking I killed my son, so there's really no reason to live. Um, fortunately, my parents, again, um, were able to sort things out. My son came to me unharmed. They found me in a torso cast with, a with this halo around my skull. And um, eager to see what this contraption could do to me, uh, I pulled my twin, uh, Schwinn 10-speed bicycle out of the garage. Didn't have a helmet to fit that thing, you know? And rode my bike up and down, knowing that I could get well and move on. Um, I finished college, got a job at the phone company, and married a wonderful man and had a beautiful girl, Kelsey. We transferred to California, and sometime later, we, div excuse me, we divorced, and I became a single mom of two children. That's when I started having grand mal seizures, and the doctors would try all different types of medicines to keep the seizures under control. Nothing was working. I finally decided to get a second opinion when my left side started paralyzing. I showed up for my doctor's appointment trying to look strong and tough and wear my red skirt, my white top, and my red FMPs. We'll talk later about those red FMPs. <laughs> um, but I was so wrong. The doctor comes and tells me that I have a tumor the size of a man's fist in my brain and an aneurysm that would require emer emergency surgery. So another call to the parents and um, my mom flew in. She was there when I woke up the next morning. The doctors told me that I had a glioblastoma multiforme grade four with a, a 5% chance of surviving and a two to 10 years of life. Um, I told that doctor, and I, this will be edited, I know. I told this doctor there's no fucking way that this is gonna take me. God will take me when he needs me, and he doesn't need me now. <laughs> so I started my chemo and radiation at Loma Linda, and um, Life goes on, and I got a nice phone call from my high school sweetheart, and um, we talked and talked. He offered support, and he offered that he could fall in love with me again, and where do I want to live? And I said, <laughs> I said, well, Woodby Island, of course. I was a baby here, and all my summers with my grandma here in, in Clinton, and um, so he would come over on his bicycle. He was living in Everett, and he would come over on his bike, and scout out all these different places and send me pictures. And um, yeah, so it was awesome. So 
so um, when I, we came down and I finished up my chemo at Northwest Hospital and um, I joined up with Team Survivors Northwest and again I laced up my running shoes, I did a half marathon with them and attempted to climb Matt Adams. Now on Woodby I started going to the Momentum Gym. We had a group of us called the Dirty Girls <laughs> and we climbed the Pinnacles at REI, we done a dozen of hikes, rode our bikes to Seattle to Portland. By 204, I wanted more. I wanted to see what my body could do. So I went back to my first sport, thank you Title IX, and <laughs> went back to seriously running again, and I did five triathlons that first season. <laughs> well, my dad and my family, my kids, were at the finish line. And I wept for grief because I just lost my mom that year. And there were also tears of joy because the race was over. <laughs> I am convinced that being active, like I am, keeps my cancer at bay. Since that first season, I have done lots more fun runs, triathlons, as well as challenging myself to a full marathon, a half Ironman, a 50K, a swim meet that I've never did a meet in my life with. Um, I've also ran the 24-hour Regnar Relay from C Bel uh, Blaine to Langley four times. I biked STP again with great friends and the Seattle to Vancouver to party. I fractured my pubic bone in the Lake Sammamish half marathon, and I ran 10 miles of a marathon leg on a mostly healed ankle. <laughs> no matter what has knocked me down in life, I just get right back up again. It's been a full and a wonderful journey. I wouldn't want it any other way, and it's still happening. So. I'm very humbled to be here. Thank you very much.